Hi, I'm Michelangelo for Star Licks. I'm going to be showing you 20 of my licks, musical phrases, solo concepts and techniques that I use. But before we get started, let me tell you about my equipment. I use 400 watt Marshall stacks wired in stereo processed through a Korg dual digital delay into a Korg modular effects pedal board where I use stereo digital chorus, stereo digital delay, compression, distortion, and I also use a bus overdriver for a little extra distortion on solos when I need it. The guitar that I'm going to be using throughout most of the video is a BC Rich Ironbird. It's made out of alder, it's got 24 frets, a Kaler system, and um, two humbuckers. One of my backup guitars is a custom-made Dean Mach 5, and it's made out of basswood, and I like light woods on guitars. Basswood and alder are the two lightest woods you can get, and it's got a Kaler tremolo system, uh, two humbuckers, and it's got 24 frets. And this is... <laughs> As you can see, this guitar is pretty beat up, and it's pretty beat up because of doing things on stage like this. <laughs> this guitar is my trademark. It's the custom-made Dean Double Axe. And don't call it a double neck. Jimmy Page uses double necks. This is called the double axe, and I'll be talking more about it later in the video. I used to teach guitar for a number of years, and the two questions my students asked me the most were, Michael, how do you pick so fast? And also, how do you practice? You know, how did you get your chops to where they are now? And so before we start doing the riffs, I'd like to uh, demonstrate my picking technique. When I used to get a um, student for the first time, and it was his first lesson, I used to ask him the very first thing when he walked in, and because I had a lot of hot young guitar players that wanted to take lessons from me, I'd go, well, impress me, blow me away. I want to see your best riffs. And usually guitar players have their one or two intimidation riffs that they've practiced for hours, and then after that it's all over. They've blown their wad. And what I used to do is after I heard those couple, then I'd ask him again, I'd go, well, now I want you to play as fast as you can, but I don't want to hear anything that you've done before. And so they'd start playing, and I'd cut them off, and then I'd go, well, now I want you to play that lick slow. And they'd go, well, wait a second, man, I can't play it slow. I mean, you know, I'm just playing. It's spontaneous. It just happens. And what I try to tell my students, and this is one thing you can get from learning these licks, is the, the moral of the story is to be fast, you have to practice slow, because most people, they think to play fast, you have to practice fast. And what happens is that you practice all these licks and you don't know what the heck you're playing. And so what I did is I made them see the licks they played fast and slow it down. And when they play it slow, then you really concentrate on what you're doing with your left hand, your right hand. That's when you can get your speed down. So the moral of it is, the moral of the story is, is to play fast, you have to learn how to play slow. The way I pick is I put, position my three fingers on the body of the guitar between the pickups and my hand actually glides over the top. It's almost like a phonograph needle um, playing on a record. Um, also, I use Dunlap Jazz 3 picks. Um, they're the hardest picks that I've found, and they're the most pointed. And they're the hardest things I've found next to a rock. And other guitar picks that I've used literally started melting in my hand. They started bending around my thumb. So for my style of picking, and I think for good guitar picking, that you need a heavy pointed pick, like a Dunlap Jazz 3. Okay, there's a common denominator between guitar players who can pick fast and guitar players who can't. And all that is, and it doesn't matter if you hold your pick like I do, if you cup it like this and, and rest it on the bridge, if you hold it with two fingers, what angle you, you, put it, you know, put it on the strings, all that matters is if you don't move the joints in your index finger and your thumb. In other words, if you keep it rigid, you can pick fast. The guys who can't pick fast flick their thumb. They play like this. And how fast can you flick your thumb? You can't do it. And so the common denominator, if you want to play warp speed instead of impulse power, is you have to keep your fingers rigid. And what I, what I did to uh, test my students and just to get a good idea is I had people play a tremolo. And what you do is you start a tremolo 
like this. And you notice the way you're picking. Your fingers are very rigid, and then you slow it down. And now what most people tend to do is when they're playing fast and they slow it down, they change their picking style, and that's when they get into this. And the way to become a fast picker is to play and look at, when you're playing like this, I call it the PPS, the potential picking speed, and to be able to slow it down so when you're playing slow, it's the same motion, so it's very fluid. Before we start the first exercise, let's tune up. I tune to A440, and I'll start on the first string E and work my way down. This is E. B. G. D. A. And E. Here's some exercises that you can warm up with to develop your chops. Now, you've probably seen this exercise before, but it's not in just playing it, it's how you play it. And there's a lot of little things to watch out for that if you play it the right way can really benefit you. First of all, the exercise is basically this. Now, if you'll notice, what I do with my left hand, and this is good left-handed technique, is you keep your thumb behind the neck and perpendicular to the guitar. And you make sure that this area here, that there's a little daylight. And when you first put your fingers on the strings, what you do is this. When you start this exercise, you put all four fingers on the frets. And, just, and then take a look at your hand. This is good fret positioning. This is good left-handed technique. Now, everybody's hand is different. You know, some are bigger, some are smaller. But when you put your hand like this, that is the best possible positioning that you your particular style and your particular hand can do. And when you play the exercise, as far as your right hand, again, make sure your fingers do not move, you know, that you don't do the flick of the thumb technique, and then you rip through the exercise. Now, also, when you play this, pretend there's an imaginary line over the frets, because most people's, everybody's fingers have a tendency to move that way. And what you want to do is make sure that you keep your fingers as close to the strings as possible. And that way, you'll, you know, you have to make sure that you don't move a lot. And what I call it is think lazy. You know, the lazier, the less you move, the better. And I use, call it economy of motion because the less you move, the faster you can play and the better you can do it. So it sounds like this. <laughs> exercise number two and it's an exercise in triads and it's also got a lot of parts where you have to pick one note on each string and it sounds like this and here it is slowed down this is exercise number three Okay, this is a Dorian um, mode exercise. This is an A Dorian. Um, when, you, when you have four finger positionings, um, you can only get five positions on a guitar. So what this does, it's a good exercise for your left hand in that you're changing positions and your right hand and that you have to keep up with it. And so let me play it slow for you. And it sounds like this. This is exercise number four, and it's based on a blues scale, and it's really good for um, keeping your fingers close because it works on the first and fourth finger, and it's also good for your third and fourth finger because there's a lot of play between them, and it goes like this. <laughs> and this is exercise four, slow. OK, 
Okay, this is exercise five. Now, it's a real short riff, but um, what this is really good for is most of the problems that guitar players have with picking is that a lot of the riffs that they play are three notes on a string. And what happens is every other string, you're going to hit the neck, that string on an upstroke. And that seems to be the problem that most pickers have. So what this exercise is, in one little riff, is to work on that upstroke on another string. And it sounds like this. <laughs> So why don't you open up your Starlux booklet and we'll get started with riff number one. <laughs> Okay, lick number one is basically can be broken down into four parts, and it sounds like this. the second part of the riff. The third part of the riff sounds like this. The fourth part of the riff sounds like this. This is lick number two. Slow, it sounds a little like this. This is lick number three. And here it is slow. Okay, there's no question that these first three licks are pretty hard and they're going to take some, you know, a lot of effort to get down. Um, when I was in high school, I used to um, tell my mom I was sick and take off of school and literally stay home and practice all day. And when I first started picking every note, I had this one riff and it was a simple little riff. But and I practiced it for 12 hours and at the end of the day, I still didn't have it down. I'd play it once and I'd have it down. Then the next time I'd play it, I didn't have it. And when I finally, I don't know what happened, it just hit me. I watched myself play the riff twice. I played it fast and I realized that I did two down picks in a row. And it's like, fast picking is like running. You don't run with two left steps or two right steps. You alternate. And so when I finally realized 
that, and it goes back to what I'm saying about playing quick and not understanding, when I finally understood what I did, and it, I could play it, and I never had a problem since. So when you're going over these licks, if you start it off and you follow the picking examples that we'll be writing, that you see in the booklet, and you go over them slowly and get it down, it'll actually take a lot less time. Okay, now let's start lick four. <laughs> In lick number four, I, I'm demonstrating four different ways to do pull-offs. And I have to say, when uh, Van Halen first came out and I first heard Eruption, I mean, it, was, it sounded great and it changed guitar, but I refused to do it because everybody and their brother was going... And I just, I couldn't take it, and it was great. But, you know, now it's just common vocabulary for guitar players. And this is just a couple of different ways that I do it. And so I'll play it slow for you, and so you can pick up on some of the few different ways. It starts like this. This is lick number five. And so this is how it goes when, when it's played slow. This is lick number six. Okay, lick six is a little bit of my variation of a Django Reinhardt riff. And uh, I found out uh, a few years ago that, you know, where I thought I got it from him, he ended up copying it from Mozart. So it would spin around for a long time. And for so those of you who don't know too much about Django Reinhardt, he only had two working fingers on this hand, so, and he ripped on this riff as fast as I play it. So if he can do it with two fingers, everybody out there can definitely do it with four. And it sounds like this. I'll play it slow. <laughs> Now on to lick seven. That lick is um, from a song of ours called Call to Arms. And if you've noticed, I mean, obviously you noticed that when I played uh, Over the Neck, I've been doing that for a long time. And I like, it goes back to my concept of playing live and versus in the studio. I mean, nobody sees you playing Over the Neck in the studio, but live, I believe you should rip their faces off, shred it up, just, you know, it's, it's flash, it's taste, it's a whole different thing. But I've been playing Over the Neck for a long time, and... Uh, <laughs> Okay, now getting back to the lick, 
Uh, I'm going to play it slow, and I'm going to show you or demonstrate how I play over the neck. And it starts like this. Number eight is from a song called Loving on Time off the Holland album, and it goes like this. And I'll play it slow and let you hear it. Also, at the end of that riff, I added what's called a sweep, and um, that's where I took my pick and swept it across the strings where you heard that arpeggio. And I'll be demonstrating a few more of those later on in other licks. Now let's go on to lick number nine. <laughs> Okay, this is uh, another lick from the Holland album. It's a song called Wake Up the Neighborhood. And that is part of the rhythm track to it. It's a, you know, the double bass standard like metal feel. Um, what I like to do when I play rhythm on, on things like that is I like to add a lot of fills. Like, you know, when I'm playing um, like a... <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to slow down the uh, rhythm pattern of Wake Up the Neighborhood, and it sounds like this. This is lick number 10. break this riff down in sections too and um, I'm going to start with the first section. Okay, the next section is again using chromatics and I'm also mixing with the blues scale 
and at the end of it I'm doing pull-offs and it's the first part of it is in a closed position here and then I open it up with a five fret spread and slow it sounds like this <laughs> Okay, after that, I mute the strings and I play actually um, triads in a B natural minor scale, then go down to F sharp and end with a B um, arpeggio, and this is one, it would it'd be a classical guitar arpeggio, and it sounds like this. <laughs>
Now I'd like to show you the double axe. The double axe is made from two custom-made Dean guitars. What I have here is a right-handed guitar, and this is a truly left-handed guitar. What they are is joined together in the back by a recessed flight case latch. And as you can see, it's got 24 frets, two humbuckers again, 24 here. And this is a custom-made Dean tremolo system that is a, a right-handed and left-handed one, so they'd match when I got the guitars. Um, up here, I had, well, when I first started playing it, two guitars at the same time, I had a lot of trouble with feedback, had a lot of volume, so I had this designed for a mute. So when I put these on the strings, it blocks out all the other, all the other strings that I'm not playing. <laughs> Licks 11 through 14 are going to be demonstrations of arpeggios. Um, lick 11 starts with an A minor arpeggio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sweep technique. Some people call it a rake technique, but all it is is to take your hand and literally sweep across the strings. Now, it, it's really useful for arpeggios, so you can get a violin type sound, or actually playing piano things, and classical guitarists use it a lot. The first riff sounds like this. <laughs> Lick 12 is an E minor arpeggio, and it sounds like this. Number 13 is a D major arpeggio, and it sounds like this. Okay, now on these three licks, what I'm doing is when I come to the top, I hammer on, then I start my down sweep. So what it, the basic motion is a hammer on, then I come back with a down motion. So it's one sweeping motion up, one sweeping motion down. Now look, 14 is a little different. It's a diminished arpeggio, and it goes like this. Now, in Lick 15, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use um, the arpeggios that you learned in 11 through 14. But before I play those, I'm going to start off with a little ascending riff, and it sounds like this. Okay, what I'm going to do is break down the riff into sections. I'm going to play everything all the way up to the beginning of the arpeggios. Now, what I'm doing is playing in a harmonic minor ascending, but it's, it's more, it's not, it's a, it's a sequence, but it's more like a pattern of notes, and it sounds like this slow. <laughs> Now, when I get to there, I start another pattern. This would be like the second part of this lick, and it goes. Okay, now I'm going to start with the arpeggios. Starts with E minor, going down to B minor, to A minor, and it sounds like this. number 16. OK, 
Okay, and lick number 16, what I'm doing is I'm playing a series of C-sharp um, diminished arpeggios. Now, diminished arpeggios work like this. Every four frets, you can keep repeating it, and it's basically the same arpeggio. You're just changing an inversion. Now, what I do when I start this, I'm picking every note. Now, it's easiest to start with an up pick on this. Um, for, don't ask me why, but when I play it, it, it lays more comfortably with my fingers. Anyway, it starts like this. I'll play it for you slow. Okay, the second section goes. Okay, now the last part of it, I take it up and it's like an old, actually I, I took it from an old, it's like a blues lick played diminished style and it goes. Lick 17, 18, and 19 are all based off of an A major arpeggio. Now, there's a major seventh in there when I play it, but it still revolves around A major, and the sound when you hear it when it's played fast is A major. Okay, lick number 17 sounds like this. Now, this is lick 17 played slow. Okay, lick number 18 is going down two octaves with this riff. Now, there's a little variation, but it's the same concept. It goes like this. And now, played slow, it sounds like this. Okay, lick number 19 goes down three octaves, and it sounds like this. Now, this is lick 19 played slow. It goes like this. Now, the thing that's the hardest um, to, to grasp about this riff is that when you change positions, you're actually going four, one, and then moving your fourth finger down here. And once you get that down, it really adds a lot of dexterity to your left hand. What all this leads up to is I'm going to be playing the 20th lick using um, riffs from 17, 18, and 19. And it's a solo called Off and Running, and it goes like this. I hope you enjoyed listening to and learning these licks as much as I enjoyed making this Starlix video. And in closing, I'd just like to say three words to all you aspiring guitar players out there. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs>